Hey guys, welcome back, it's Meg. Today we are going to be going over Voodoo and getting that all set up for a Mythic Plus setting. There is a lot in this add-on. It is really daunting. The UI is not super straightforward or organized in any particular way, but it is still my favorite healing add-on that I have used, mainly because it is super customizable in terms of the visuals, as well as the actual things that you can track, and you can also use things like mouse overs and click casting. Basically what we're going to do today is take the default profile that they give us when you first download it and we are going to build the profile that I use on live from scratch. There's going to be a couple of things that are different, um, things that I will normally use weak ores for on live that I don't have access to now, but this is just the voodoo side of things and I will be also talking about things that I would recommend changing from the default profile or recommending things that I would just honestly leave alone and leave that as default or disabled. So we don't actually have a UI with Voodoo that we can comfortably go left to right in. We're going to be jumping around a lot and there is also a lot of subsections within each of the categories. So we're just going to go through it in the way that I would go about doing it if I were to do this from scratch from the beginning. The first thing that we are going to do is open up the options menu. You can type slash Voodoo OPT or you can also just click the mini map button, which is usually what I do. Starting out, we are going to head over to the move category down at the bottom and all we're going to do here is just remove panel number two. We're not going to be using this, we are only focused on panel number one. Now we are going to hop over to the panels category and under the general subsection we are going to go to ordering. I personally do not like seeing myself first so I am just going to go ahead and disable that button that says you first. I'm also going to select hide empty because I do not want to see any of the empty slots in the group. And then right below that, I'm going to be sorting by tank, healer, melee DPS, and range DPS. This is also where you can change your alignment. I prefer to have vertical panels, but you can also do horizontal if you want them to be like below your feet or something. For the panels, you can just change the background and the border color. I have them as default colors and I make them super tiny so I cannot see them. Next, you can change the spacing between the bars. You can change the overall scale as well as the height and width of the bars. This is obviously up to personal preference. I prefer to have them on the smaller side, but I know a lot of people like to have them a bit larger. Under bars, you can adjust the texture that you use. I like to use the solid texture just because it isn't distracting or anything. And then under custom settings on the same panel, you can also see where you can adjust the height of the mana bar if you have those showing. For bar color, I like to have it as a gradient, meaning that green being the highest health and red being the lowest health, it will go from a gradient green to red, depending on how much health they are missing. You can see just as I drop myself from the air here, I, as I start to lose more health, the color starts to change, and then as I regain the health, the color will start to go back up into that green gradient. Next up we have headers. This is just where it says like group 1, group 2, whatever. I like to disable this mainly just because in 5 mans there is only one group. Next up I just leave targets and tooltips both at default. I haven't really messed with this and I don't really find a need to. Next up we have the text section. Uh, starting off with bar text, you can select the class color to show as the name. You can have an outline which will make it easier to read. I prefer to have this on as well as a shadow. You can also change the font size as well as the actual font itself. You can also change the text position, which I like to have it in the bottom front right. Under show text, I like to have my details nickname showing. And then I will also hide the hit points because we have the gradient bars turned on, so we will be able to tell without the extra text and clutter. Next up, we have hot icons. This one is a little bit overwhelming at first. Uh, but just starting out with the easy things, I would leave the text options alone. I don't really mess with those. Shields, I like to have the shield status showing up. That is just so I know if people have an absorb or not. And then I personally keep this one selected. This means that all of the icons that we have showing, like, like rejuvenation there, it will cover the power bar. You can also have a display above or to the right above. You can have it on a bunch of different locations but I prefer to have it on the overlapping the power bar. The hot order is the order in which your things will show up. So you can see that we have rejuvenation is in slot four. We have life bloom, wild growth, and then we will also have spring blossoms as well as regrowth. You can see that the order they're showing up in and you can move these around if you want. 
but I usually will just keep them in the order that I care about them the most, if that makes any sense. So that this is all personal preference, but this is just how you manage it. And then I would also make sure that you don't have the others selected so you can see which abilities are actually yours. Uh, one thing I did skip over by accident is the sizing. This is where you change the size of the icons. They get pretty big pretty fast, so I usually keep them around like 35, 34. They're a little bit tiny, but I do prefer smaller frames in general. Moving on to spells. This is basically where you will bind anything into Voodoo that you want to control through the add-on. So like right now I have right button sets rejuvenation, middle button is menu which ends up getting changed usually to a movement ability for me. But this is where you have all of the bindings and the modifier keys that you can put in to your add-on so you don't have to make a separate mouse over for it or have a separate add-on for it. Um, usually what I do is I will just do the mouse keys with no modifiers. And then for everything else, I will skip local, skip global, and skip all of that, and I will just make mouse over macros that I use with my keyboard, so not everything that I have is in Voodoo. Under miscellaneous, I will have resurrect and battle res smart cast. I will not have cleanse as smart cast because sometimes when you're not in combat, you don't want to dispel someone, you would rather just heal them. So that is something that has had caused problems in the past, so I'd recommend unclicking cleanse and then just having res and resurrect both smart cast out of combat. Moving down to debuffs, I want to deselect removable only. I also want to deselect class and non-harmful. I would like to know these things mainly because if there's a bleed and I can't remove it, they're still going to be taking damage and I would like to know what they're taking damage from. Class, this one isn't so much of a big deal, but I do like to have it uh, available just in case something is going group wide. I'd like to see that as well as non-harmful. I do still want to see the debuffs that they have, even if it isn't necessarily affecting them because it could be a cast that ends up affecting others if it continues to get off and we're not aware of it. I also like to have icons showing, only icon, and then we, for the ignore list here, this is where you can blacklist things like exhaustion or sated or any of the other lust things as well as challenger's burden, which is the mythic plus aura that you get during a key. That is not something you need to keep track of because you know that it's going to be there. So that is where you can do that. Debuffs and defaults, I like to know the timer, I like to have the animation on them as well as the icon. The icon is the biggest thing for me. You can also add sound effects if you like, but I tend to tune them out so I do not have sound effects added. And then under store and delete, this is where you can add any like challenger's burden or things like that when it normally show up. You can blacklist them through a custom debuff. Okay, we are now going to pop on over to the general tab and then under operation mode, I'm going to knock this down to 90%. This means that if I am above 90% HP, the opacity is knocked down a little bit. I pick 90% because that is the threshold for Grievous stats. Next for lock panels, I like to lock them while I'm in combat just so I don't accidentally drag them around, but they should be able to be moved outside of combat. Uh, whenever you need, but you don't want to be in combat and accidentally move your frames, so locking them in fight is very nice. Under filters, we are going to be checking main tank, main assist, five man main tanks, and private tanks. This is really just so you don't see people twice, as if I were a main tank, I would have a separate uh, little side panel here where I would be considered a main tank, and then you would see me in the normal groups. We don't want that, so we're going to filter those things out. Under hide panels, you can also decide when you do not want to see them. Uh, if you are solo, this will completely hide the panels when you are alone. I prefer to have this unchecked because I do do all of my healing through that. And then the pet battles is pretty much the only thing that I will hide it in. But otherwise, they're not super invasive and you can just drag them off to the side. But pet battles, you obviously don't need them at all. So that's the one that I will hide it for all of the time. Under scanners, this is where you are going to be setting your range. If they are out of range, then the opacity will be reduced further than they are, as you see here. Um, so I do not have anything special. You just pick the, the ability that you would like to have the, your range indicator. I usually will do this with a dispel, but in this case I'm using rejuvenation. Or you can also just have it be a 40 yards thing. Uh, either way, I prefer to do it by spell, especially with things like Evoker coming up, they have a shortened range, so you want to make sure that you are in range of them with your spells. I do have all of this stuff kind of disabled. Um, I do not have the direction arrows showing, I do not have the distance, none of that. 
Next up, under threat and incoming. When it says incoming, it is meaning healing, so you can show healing absorb and the shield bar, as well as overhealing coming in for everyone, others your own, or just normal healing coming in. You can see here, as I drop myself, you can see that little bar there where it's showing the healing that I'm going to receive. This is something kind of minor, but there is text there to show how much overhealing I am receiving. This is mainly just for something uh, more so in raid, because you want to be able to tell if you and every other healer is going to heal that individual. You don't have to send mana into it, especially if you're playing something that's a little bit more mana hungry. You can stop your cast when you see that overhealing, and you can just go ahead and save that mana. Everything for AoE advice, I leave just as default. I don't mess with that. Same for miscellaneous. DC shield and ready check should both be default. You can have announce resurrection on. I don't use that because I tend to spam click that ability uh, waiting for combat to drop, so then that spams chat. Something to be aware of. You can turn it on if you're in pugs, but generally I usually just leave the DC shield and the ready check on. Under indicators, I have aggro set to default. This is just going to show you if you have aggro, it will pop up on the outside of your frame. This red bar looks exactly like that. You can see the dot right there, the swift mendable dot. That means I can use some swift metal myself. I personally do not like this. I can see if I have rejuvenation. Um, if you wanted to have that on there, you could, but I personally find it a little bit distracting and a little bit over the top. And then for health bar, we did this earlier where it should just be to default health bar generic gradient. That is the way that it should be, and everything else I leave default in here. Swapping characters really quickly just to show you guys something with a spell trace. This is a bouquet. So enveloping breath does not show up by default on uh, voodoo frames or on just the base wow frame, so we do have to make a spell trace for this. What you do in this situation is you select a bouquet and you select spell trace, and then you type in the name of your spell that you want to keep track of. And then you can have the default icon, things like that. You can set all of these different settings, but you want to make sure that you hit add. That is going to be what adds in your spell trace. And then, we're unfortunately not done. We are going to hop back over into panels, hot icons, and then we are going to apply a place for that spell trace to go so it shows up on the frames. And that is going to be treated as if it were a hot on your bars. Next up we do have colors. This is not something I'm really going to go too in depth on, but you can change the colors of pretty much everything. You can use it on uh, effects like debuffs, you can do it with modes, which is like the color if you're full health, the color if you're low health, and you can change everything. Uh, you can change the color of power bars, hots, basically anything that you have a color for on these bars you can change. So that is something that you can play around with. Uh, and that will be unique to your profile. And then you can head on over and save the profile if you're happy with it. And then of course there is ways to import and export profiles if you don't want to go through this process and make your own. I do have mine available and there are a bunch of other available as well uh, on Wago. You can find them there. These are all of the profiles that I have to import one. You will get the import link off of Wago and you will paste it here, hit OK and then apply and you will be able to see it here. To export, all you do is open up this after clicking export, copy and paste it into a Wago uh, import location, and then you can upload it and it will be available to others as well. I know that there is a lot to this add-on. I also know that I didn't go over everything. If you guys have additional questions or if you're confused about how to do something, please do not feel scared to reach out, I will be able to help you in the comments, or you can also uh, join my Discord, I can help there as well. But I did just want to go over kind of the basics and the most important things for setting up a profile, at least on an initial level. So I hope that this was helpful for you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching!